What is going on guys, it is Panjano here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for DayZ Standalone. More specifically, into the DayZ Standalone Beta and 1.0 release. This video is going to be providing you guys with the latest and greatest in terms of the ultimate optimizations available for the game, ensuring that everyone, regardless of your system specs, whether that be ultra high-end systems, all the way down to old potato PCs, are getting the best performance possible, the best visual fidelity possible, overall providing you guys with the smoothest and the highest FPS possible with inside of the game for the best gameplay experience. And speaking of results, if you guys can leave any of your results, questions, queries, or suggestions in that comment section down below, alongside liking this video if you are happy with the results and you do appreciate this video. And also, please do consider subscribing to the channel and pressing the bell notification if you do enjoy content like this and wish to stay up to date with the channel and the latest videos in which come to it. With all that being said and done, let's get straight into the video to keep this as fast and as informative as possible. So to start off with the video, what you guys will need to do is you'll need to head into the description down below and download the FPS increase pack, which has been provided in one of the links down below. Try out the first link if the first link doesn't work, try out the second link and then you should be good to go. Put the file into your desktop and it should look very similar to this. This file is just a basic FPS increase pack which has been compiled by myself, which includes all of the optimizations, configs, launch options, and everything you're going to need to follow along with this video. It stops you having to go around to a million different places and find links yourself, so it's all just completely compiled into a nice, safe, and easy to download pack. Once you guys have got the file downloaded, you will need a program to actually extract the file, as there is a folder with inside of this, and for this you'll need either 7-zip or WinRAR. If you don't have one of those programs installed, simply go to Google, Google one of the programs, install it to your PC, come back, and you're good to go. At this point, what we're going to be doing is going over to Daisy FPS Increase Pack by Panj, right-clicking and selecting Extract here. Once you guys have extracted the file, you'll be given a folder on your desktop with an identical name. So, starting off with the first and one of the most important optimizations in this video is, is we're actually going to be installing the optimized game config files and going through our game settings to ensure that everything with the game is completely set up and good to go for the best performance possible, ensuring that we have a good platform to build upon. So, to start off, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be navigating down into Steam. We're then going to be navigating down to Daisy, right clicking, and selecting properties. We're going to be selecting the local files tab found here at the top, and then selecting browse local files. After a few moments, the game installation directory folder will open up and it should look very similar to this. So to start off with inside of here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying an exe application fix just to the game application itself. This will ensure that we're getting the best performance across the board, it will remove any excess Windows optimizations, in which most of the time actually deteriorates your FPS, and this will also make your game feel a lot more snappier and more responsive. To do this, what we're going to be doing is navigating down to daisy underscore x64. We're going to be right clicking on this application file and navigating down to properties. With inside of here, we're then going to be navigating up to the compatibility tab. And with inside of here, we're going to be checking the box for disable full screen optimizations. We're also going to be going down to change high DPI settings. And again, checking the box for override high DPI scaling behavior performed by checking this box, pressing OK, pressing apply, and pressing OK. Now we're actually going to be repeating that step for the DAISY launcher found with inside of here as well. So again, right click on the DAISY launcher, go down to properties, compatibility, disable the full screen optimizations, change high DPI, override high DPI, OK, apply and OK. And now you've successfully optimized the game applications themselves. And we're now good to proceed on with installing our optimized game config files. To do this, what we're going to be doing is simply navigating down to our file explorer with inside of Windows and clicking on the folder. Once the file explorer opens up, we're simply going to be navigating down to the left hand side and selecting documents. With inside of here, we're then going to scroll all the way down until we find the daisy folder with inside of here and double clicking. Once you guys have opened up the folder, you'll be greeted with all of your game config files, such as the daisy.cfg, chars.daisy profile, and some of these will be named specifically to your PC's name. So don't worry if any of these files are named differently or if you have more files or less files than me, as we're only going to be editing a few of these files anyway. So once you guys are inside of this folder, it's very simple. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be dragging this over to the right hand side as we're going to be coming back to this folder later on. For now, what we're going to be doing is now navigating back into the FPS increase pack provided by double clicking and putting this folder onto the left hand side. With inside of here, we're then going to proceed to go down into the game files folder. And with inside of here, what we're now going to be doing is we're going to be selecting the game config we wish to install to our PC. For the best and most effective results across the board, I'd recommend matching the folder with inside of here to your system specs. So if you guys are running on a high-end system, go with the high-end config found with inside of the high-end folder. If you're on a medium-end system, go with medium-end. If you're on low, go with low. And if you're on an ultra-low-end, really old PC, go with the ultra-low-end config. And to do this, what we're going to be doing is just selecting the folder in which we're going to install. So again, for me, I'm going to be going with high-end, double-clicking, and you'll be greeted with a daisy.cfg and a user settings to copy text file. So for the first thing, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be getting the daisy.cfg found here, dragging this over into our documents game file and replacing the file within this destination. Once you guys have installed the daisy.cfg, there's only one last step we have to do, and that is to actually implement these user settings to copy found within inside of this notepad into our game user settings found here. So to do this, this is actually relatively simple and easy to do, but do pay attention to make sure that you do this correctly. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to navigate into the bottom left hand side and open up a blank notepad just like so. 
Type in notepad and select notepad and open up a blank notepad. What you're now going to do is navigate back into the right hand side into your documents daisy folder and you're going to grab your settings.daisy profile found here. It will typically have the name of your PC in front of this so just make sure it ends with settings.daisy profile but the beginning part of this will have a different name for you guys. What you're now going to do is drag this file and drop it into the notepad and it should just come up just like so. So once you guys have actually got this file open with inside of notepad what we're going to be doing is just simply highlighting all the way from the top all the way down to the bottom just like so right clicking and selecting delete making sure that we remove everything within inside of this file what we're now going to go ahead and do is actually minimize this notepad we're then going to go back into the fps increase pack provided going back into the game files folder back into the config folder in which we're installing and what we're now going to go ahead and do is actually open up the user settings to copy text file and then what we're going to do is just simply drag this over to the left hand side we're going to bring back up the notepad in which we closed earlier on which is now blank which is actually our settings file with inside of the game and what we're simply going to do is go over to user settings to copy highlight everything with inside of it all the way down from the top to the bottom right click and this time select copy we're then going to navigate back to the daisy profile settings file right click and select paste once you guys have done that we can then go ahead to the top hit file hit save and we can then exit out of both the notepads as those settings have now successfully been applied and we've installed our optimized game config files for Daisy. Further building upon those optimizations, what we can now go ahead and do is actually install our customized optimized launch options for the game and how to set them up depending on your system specs. So to do this, what we're going to be doing is navigating into the FPS pack provided once again by double clicking, this time going down to the launch options text file and double clicking. With inside of here, you will see a brief explanation as to how you're going to identify your system specs and how to set up your launch options depending on your system specs for your game. So to set up your launch options depending on your system specs, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding out the values for CPU count and external threads. Now to do this, we're simply going to drag the notepad over here to the top right hand side. We're then going to proceed to navigate down to our taskbar, right click on the taskbar and open up task manager. With inside of task manager, we're then going to navigate up to the performance tab and we're then going to proceed to click on CPU. We can then drag this over to the left hand side and with inside of the CPU tab, we're then going to be looking down on the bottom right hand side for cores and logical processors. Now to set up your launch options, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding the number under cores, which is more than likely going to be different to mine. You could have two, four, six, eight, you could have any number with inside of it, but whatever the number for cores is, we're going to be going up to CPU count. We're going to be matching this to our CPU cores found here. So for me, that's going to be eight. We're then going to proceed to go over to external threads found here. And to find out your external thread count, all you need to do is navigate back down into task manager, this time looking at logical processes. And the number it says under logical processes for you is going to be your external thread count. This could be different to your core count. That's absolutely fine if it is. It's more than likely going to be a different number than mine. But whatever it says under logical processes, set to external threads. So again, for me, that's going to be eight. And once you guys have got that set up, these are your launch options you're going to install to the game. What we now need to go ahead and do is go to the right hand side of the launch options, highlight and select all the way to the left hand side just like so, right click and select copy. Once you guys have done that, we're then going to navigate back into Steam, this time right clicking on Daisy, this time going into the properties folder. With inside of the properties folder, we're then going to navigate over to set launch options, and with inside of the blank text box which opens up, if you happen to have any text in here already, simply go ahead and just remove it. Once it's then blank, what we're then going to go ahead and do is right click and select paste. Then go ahead and press OK, and that optimization has successfully been applied. Assuming that we are still inside of the properties tab for Daisy, at this point what I'd recommend doing is actually disabling the Steam overlay whilst inside of the game. This will help out with some of you guys running on medium end to lower end systems, just achieve a little bit more stability. So if you don't find yourself using the Steam chat to talk to people whilst in game or inviting people, you don't tend to use the Steam overlay, make sure that you do disable this just to make sure that you you aren't running into any excess issues. At this point, what you can go ahead and do is then exit out of the Steam properties, and you can exit out of the Launch Options Notepad, and you can save it if you wish to do so. And what we can now go ahead and do is actually boot into the game to further tweak and personalize our in-game settings, depending on personal preference. And we can then proceed to further build upon those optimizations by optimizing the operating system, and some other things with inside of Steam, and some other tweaks and tips to help you guys further better your FPS across the board. So at this point, what we're going to be doing is navigating down to Steam, going to Daisy, and selecting Play. Once you guys have booted into the game, what we can now go ahead and do is make sure that all of our in-game settings are set up to our personal likings, and we can also go ahead and further tweak around some settings to set them up for our personal preference. So to do this, what we're going to be doing is navigating to the top right hand side and clicking on the spanner icon. With inside of here, we can then start off by going ahead into the game tab, and we can set up our field of view and options with inside of here. Everything with inside of this tab found here is completely personal preference and shouldn't be affecting performance, so you can set this up how you wish to do so. We can then proceed to go ahead to the video tab found here at the top. Now with inside of here, I'd personally recommend not touching anything as all the optimizations have been applied from the configs in which you have installed. The settings in which you will find applied with inside of here will be best match for your systems so I'd recommend not really changing any of these around unless you really want to. 
But for the most important things in which I recommend everyone setting is to go to display mode and ensure that you're running in full screen mode. I'm personally recording this video and tabbing out and stuff, so I'm personally going to be selecting windowed. But for everyone watching this video, make sure that you do set this to full screen for the best optimizations possible. You can then proceed to go down to VSync, and I'd highly recommend actually turning this off as well, as this will introduce input lag and lock your FPS down. So again, turn VSync off. Once you guys have got everything set up with inside of here and you're happy with how everything is, go ahead and press the apply button. We can then navigate to the controls tab and we can set anything with inside of here to anything you wish to do so. Set your mouse sensitivity up, set any of your key bindings, set anything with inside of here, however you wish to do so, as this will not affect performance and this is just personal preference. Once you guys have got all of that set up, then go ahead and press the apply button. Proceeding on from there, what we can now go ahead and do is actually apply one of the most important optimizations included with inside of this video, and this should help out everyone, regardless of your system specs, you should be seeing an improvement from using this. So what we're going to be doing is navigating into the FPS increase pack once again, this time navigating inside of the optimizations folder, and with inside of here, we're then going to be going inside of the DayZ process manager. With inside of this folder, you'll find three registry entry files titled DZ above normal priority, DZ high priority, and DZ normal priority. These keys with inside of here, simply going ahead and double clicking on one of them will set the priority mode with inside of Windows and your task manager to be the matching priority of which key you select. Meaning that if you go ahead and select the DZ high priority key, this will set DAISY to launch in high priority mode with inside of Windows all of the time. But for everybody watching this video, I'd highly recommend actually going ahead and selecting the DZ high priority key by double clicking. At this point, it will then ask you if you wish to continue, select yes, it will then notify you that the changes have successfully been applied and then press OK. At that point, every time you boot into the game, the priority mode with inside of DAISY will be set to high, meaning that your system is putting more resources towards the game than other processes in which are open. You can then go ahead and exit out of that folder. Now, for any of you guys who are using Discord, we can actually apply an extremely effective, quick, and easy to apply optimization to Discord itself to further boost FPS in practically every single game. So to apply this optimization, we're gonna be navigating down into Discord, going to the left-hand side, going to our profile, and selecting user settings. With inside of here, we're then gonna navigate down to the left-hand side to the appearance tab. And with inside of the appearance tab, we're then gonna be scrolling all the way down to the bottom to the advanced settings, going to hardware acceleration and actually turning this off. Once you guys have clicked the flicker switch, press OK. Discord will then proceed to restart with hardware acceleration mode turned off. Another incredibly useful fix in which we can apply for every machine, which is in my testing, which should help improve performance across the board in terms of CPU utilization and GPU utilization, overall giving you guys better FPS on pretty much every single game. It's very simple and easy to do. Just simply follow the steps as closely as possible and you should be good to go. So to start off, what we're going to be doing is navigating to the bottom left-hand side and typing in Reg Edit, just like so. Once you've typed that in, go ahead and press Enter. And with inside of here, what we're then going to do is start off by going to the left-hand side and selecting H key local machine. With inside of there, we're then going to navigate down to the software folder, double-clicking, and this time scrolling all the way down until you find the Microsoft folder. Double-click on Microsoft, scroll all the way down once again, this time selecting the Windows NT folder, double-clicking, going into current version, and with inside of current version, we're then going to scroll down to the M section and select the multimedia folder. With inside of multimedia, we're then going to proceed to click on system profile, but we're only going to be clicking on system profile once. At this point, what we're going to be doing is navigating to the right hand side and you should be seeing network throttling index. Some of you watching this will more than likely not see system responsiveness and some of you might have it. If you do already have the system responsiveness key, double click on the key and set the value data to 1, then press OK. If you don't have the system responsiveness key, we're simply going to go ahead and create one. To do this, we're going to right click under network throttling index, select new, select D word 32 bit value. At this point, you'll simply go ahead and call this system responsiveness, just like so. Make sure that you don't have any spelling mistakes. If you're paranoid about that, you can navigate into the description down below and just copy and paste this. Press enter. Once you guys have actually pressed enter and the key has been created, all you then need to go ahead and do is double click on the key and set the value data to one and then press okay. Once you guys have got that set up, we're then going to navigate back over to the system profile folder found here on the left hand side, this time double clicking on it, then going inside of tasks, then going down to games. With inside of here, we're going to start off by going to the SFIO priority key found here, double clicking, and we're going to set the value data with inside of here to high, which is HIGH. It will normally be set to medium. Once you guys have done that, press OK. We're then going to go ahead to scheduling category, and again, double clicking, setting the value data to high once again, and pressing OK. We're then going to proceed up to the priority key found here, double clicking, setting the value data to 6, and pressing OK. And last but not least, we're then going to be going up to GPU priority, double clicking, and this time setting the value data to 8. Once you guys have got that done, go ahead and press OK, and we can then exit out of the registry editor as those optimizations have now been completed. Applying those optimizations will tailor Windows to provide more resources and more optimizations towards the game applications themselves, putting them at a higher priority with inside of Windows, overall giving you guys a much better experience, smoother gameplay, and typically higher FPS. 
If you've done this in previous FPS guides or you've done this in the past, make sure that you do apply these optimizations again, as many of them are different and many of them apply new techniques. So to do this, it's actually very simple to do. First of all, we're going to ensure that our Windows Power Plan is set up correctly. To do this, we're going to be navigating to the bottom left-hand side and typing in Power Plan. Once you guys have got that typed in, click on one of the options with the cord going around it with a little battery. Doesn't matter what the option says, just click on one of them. But inside of here, go to the directory at the top and select where it says Power Options. Then proceed to go over to the Show Additional Power Plans. And with inside of here, you'll typically be seeing Balanced, High Performance, and Power Saver. Now, for most of you guys watching this video, unless you have manually applied this yourselves already, you will not be seeing Ultimate Performance. But everyone watching this video who's actually running on Windows 10, you can actually unlock the ultimate performance power plan with inside of Windows 10 by following the video linked in the description down below, or you can also click on the card in the top right hand side of the screen now. It'll take you to a very fast, easy and informative video, in which will show you guys how to unlock this power plan with inside of Windows. If you guys have a few more minutes spare, I recommend following that video, as the ultimate performance power plan with inside of Windows typically fixes most people's issues, especially you guys out there who are experiencing a lot of stuttering, or you just wish to get the best FPS possible. As this tailors Windows for the ultimate performance you can possibly get. If you guys don't wish to follow that video and you only wish to follow this video and you don't want to apply that to your system, that's fine. You guys can go ahead and select high performance. But if you do have the time to take to actually watch that video and apply the ultimate performance, select ultimate performance once you've unlocked it. So select one of those power plans once you guys have got it selected just by highlighting it. We can then go ahead and actually exit out of our power options as we can now build upon that in the next step. And the next step is to further utilize our CPU cores with inside of Windows by unparking them using the latest techniques. What we're going to be doing is navigating into the FPS increase pack once again by double clicking, going into the optimizations folder, and this time going over to CPU core parking setup version 2140. Simply then go ahead and double click on the setup and the setup wizard will then open up. In the bottom side of the screen now you should be seeing a brief explanation as to what CPU core on parking does. And for any of you guys who are a little bit paranoid about doing this, just know that this is 100% safe to use. It's one of the most important and recommended things in which I recommend everyone does to optimize their PC. And you should be seeing phenomenal results doing this. It's 100% safe and everyone watching this video should be doing this. So once you guys are inside of the setup, go ahead and press next. Accept the terms to the license agreement and select next again, next and install. Once it's installed, ensure the launch option down here has been selected and then press finish. Once the program opens up, you'll typically see that your numbers and such don't look the same as mine, but the program should look similar. So we're only going to be changing four options with inside of here and they're actually very simple and easy to do. To start off, what we're going to be doing is going over to the system power plan drop down menu found in the top left hand side, selecting the drop down menu and with inside of here, we're going to match the option to the power plan in which we just set with inside of Windows. So if you guys selected high performance, select high performance. If you want with ultimate performance, select ultimate performance. But inside of here, what we're now going to do is proceed to go down to Core Parking Index and dragging the blue slider all the way up to 100%. This will unpark 100% of the CPU cores on your system. We're then going to proceed to go to the right hand side to Frequency Scaling Index, which is going to be the speed of those cores, and again, dragging this up to 100%. And last but not least, for some of you guys watching this video, you might not have this option available, but if you do, go to Turbo Boost Index and finally, again, up to 100%. Once you guys have got all of those options set up, what we can then simply go ahead and do is press apply. We'll then notify you that the changes have successfully been applied, press OK, and we can then exit out of that optimization as that is completed. And for the last and final step within inside of this video, what we're going to be doing is actually navigating into the FPS increase pack provided one last time, this time going into the optimizations folder, and with inside of here, you'll then notice that there is a timer resolution application found here. What we're going to be doing with this is just simply dragging it onto our desktop just like so. And for a quick explanation and demonstration on how and when to use this program, what this program basically does is it allows you guys to lower the input lag between your operating system, the hardware you have installed, such as your graphics card and CPU, and the game application itself. Ensuring that these things can talk to each other at a much more increased rate and a much more optimized rate will ensure that you guys are getting a lot less stuttering, higher FPS, and a much more snappier, smooth, and responsive game. It will not increase heat to your system, it's completely safe to use in every aspect, and I'd recommend using it all the time. So to use the program, what you'll do is before you boot into your game or anything you're going to be doing, you'll double click on the program, you'll select maximum to set the lowest input lag possible. At this point, you'll then minimize the program, but make sure that it's still running. At this point, what you'll then go ahead and do is boot into Steam or do whatever it is you need to do or play whatever game you want to play for however long you wish to do so. Once you're then done playing your game and you've closed out of the game, you'll bring the program back up, select the default value to set it back to the normal value, and you'll then exit out of the program. And it's just that simple and easy to use. So guys, assuming that we're now completely done with the optimizations, the only last thing left to do is to actually go ahead and boot into time resolution, select maximum, go down to Steam, go to Daisy, and hit play. And there you guys have it, my ultimate FPS increase guide for DayZ with inside of the beta stage, all the way up to the 1.0 release. Make sure that you guys do leave a like on this video if you are happy with the results, alongside your questions, queries, and results in that comment section down below. And also consider subscribing to the channel and pressing that bell notification to be notified instantly of updated guides to DayZ, other games, and community suggested videos. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video, guys. I've been Panjano, and I'm out.